Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy. Joining me today we have Pro Tipsters Johnny and Dan. And we're going to run through some of the football action from the weekend and a couple of picks from this week's uh, football as well. We'll have some tennis later on too, some basketball and some ice hockey, some NHL uh, stuff as well. So let's get started with the football. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Oh, you know, cold. <laughs> <laughs> Very cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so for any UK listeners, uh, yeah, it's fierce cold. I know you think it's very cold in the UK, but you've no idea how cold it is where we are. It's it's freezing. It's about minus twelve or fifteen in places. is bad. Anyway, look, weather. You're not here for the weather. You're here for football, lads. What a weekend of football. Very good, wasn't it? Um, not sure an Arsenal fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched it. What, what, that, that was so bad. What I've written down here is same old Arsenal. Yeah? Question mark. Um, no, I think, I think if they were the same old Arsenal, they'd have been much better. The trouble, <laughs> Gary Neville nailed it. He said that he used to admire the way they played. He used to admire their, 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 you know, their football ethos and they haven't got it anymore. Um, he, you should have heard him laying to, um, Ozil and Ramsey. Um, they lost the ball. It was, it was just before the third goal. They lost the ball and they're just walking back. Yeah. And he, he was, Neville's going mental. And of course, Man City <laughs> Broke, got the ball into the area, David Silva scored. And it, it, it really was a bad performance from Arsenal. And I think, well, I didn't see Arsenal fan TV, but I'm, I'm guessing they again cream themselves going on about Wenger out. <laughs> I don't think Wenger's the whole problem. I think they've got a squad full of complacent players at the moment as well. And it's all good because Arsenal play Man City again on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh... It's it's bad though that like their their stars can't you know can't get up for for a cup final. Okay, it's the league cup final. It's a Mickey Mouse cup, really. But you know, still, it's it's what, what the hell is wrong with them? Wasn't the Mickey Mouse cup when we beat them in the final? <laughs> I remember Jack Wilshere crying that day as well. <laughs> he wasn't crying, was he yesterday? Yeah, uh, yeah. Jack Wilshere, man, he's a. I don't like him. I really, really don't like him as a player. I don't like him as a a person. I think he's overrated, and yesterday proved it again. You know, he's, and, and he's such a big. He gives it all the big, and he's such a big baby on the pitch. You know, <laughs> falls over. He, he, they call him Jack Wheelchair for a reason, you know. <laughs> oh, this is great! I'm tapping into Dan's vitriol here. I like this. <laughs> oh, there's more to come. Believe me, there's more to come. But um, so like. No, I didn't see it. I saw the highlights. Was it was it apparent from the start, Dan, that 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 it was going to be City's match? Did Arsenal have oh, any shout at all? One hundred percent, always. I don't think Man City got out of second gear. It was that easy, yeah. Yeah, it was that easy. Ridiculous. I was surprised they didn't bring Phil Foden on. I really was. I thought that they could have thrown on Foden and just said, you know, here you go, lad. Have have a, have a game in a champion, you know, in a in a cup final. Because we can afford to put you on the pitch without worrying about it. Plus the fact is the talented kid. Yeah. You know? But, um, ugh, it was, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I've got to admit, I, I'm like Gary Neville. I used to, uh, I used to, uh, oh, sorry, Phil Foden did come on. I missed that. 89th minute. Uh-huh. There you go. Obviously I switched, I, I switched off before the end, as you can tell. Um, I used to admire Arsenal myself. The same reason, um, Gary Neville did. No, I remember when they beat us in the um when we, in our first year in the Premier League, two thousand two, smashed us four 0 I remember walking out think, and not being angry because we'd be, been beaten by such an amazing team. It was like, eh, you know, yeah. no problem there. It wasn't our fault. They were amazing. Now it's not the same. Mm. They're just not good enough. Yeah, that's what Sotiri Henry was saying. I saw a little clip of what he was saying that uh, you know, they can beat anyone on their day, but also they can lose anyone on their bad day. Mm. You know, okay. There's no, there's nothing wrong with losing the Man City. Of course there isn't, you know. But just, just not showing up. That's, that's just, it's just weird, you know. Like, yeah, I don't get it. You know? Johnny, what did you watch over the weekend? I haven't, I haven't watched much, much of football, much of football. But uh, I was impressed by Atletico yesterday and Griezmann's hat trick against Sevilla. Yeah, five two, huh? We, we, we talked about it, the match in our podcast last week. We. 
we're kind of expecting a very narrow game and a tough game and maybe a narrow win for Atletico, but it was 5-2 for Atletico. That's, uh, that was a, I saw the highlights. It was quite a spectacular uh, game. And also Schalke won 2-0 uh, in Leverkusen, which, mm-hmm. which is something that uh, I was very surprised. And uh, finally, the Japanese J-League started. I know you guys, you guys don't really care, but uh, <laughs> that's something I look forward to every year. I don't mind the J-League. It's something you can watch on a Saturday morning before the real football. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I know. No, there are always, like, you know every, winter there are, every winter there are so interesting transfers there, so ma- quite many transfers. And, um, yeah, it's, it's it's completely different football than, than we see here. Mm. No, I was watching, uh, I was watching Roma and AC last night and, uh, I was, it was my, my bro, we don't get to see each other that often, he's in this part of the world. And, you know, I said, right, which, what are we watching? Seville Atletico or Roma, uh, Milan? And he said, Roma Milan. And he, he's like you, Dan. He's like, yeah, I don't, don't really like Spanish football. So yeah, we, uh, we watched the wrong match. And then my dad rang me and he didn't know how to work the Ryanair website and it, it was just a catastrophe we hardly watched any football at all but anyway that's not why you're you're here and um, but, but uh, actually on milan gattuso's good, doing a great job now isn't he they haven't lost in i don't know since moses was a child or something it's quite a while now isn't it mm. yeah he was criticized in the beginning i think uh if you remember since uh Gennaro gattuso took charge of milan uh one of his first games uh Milan played was uh, the game against uh, Benevento. Ben, ben, yeah. ben, yeah, exactly. Too, and yeah. the goalkeeper equalized in uh, 90, <laughs> in the injury time with a uh, from a corner. So and then he was heavily criticized after the game. But uh, I think he's proving that uh, he can be a good coach. And for me, what I always liked about uh, Gattuso as a player and even now as a coach, he's very passionate and he's very loyal to his. Uh, to, to, to the club, so that's something that is you don't see that often anymore in yeah. football. No, 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 no. It's great. It's great to have him on the sideline. He's class. And as well, the other a lot of people there was there was kind of criticism when he got the job because he's like, well, you know, okay, we all know him as a player, but what, what's he been doing? But you know, he was he was player manager at Sion in Switzerland, and he he got Pisa promoted into the Serie B as well. So he has he does have experience, you know, and like getting. You know, getting getting the team promoted into Serie B, that's that's a tough gig because you you got what, three or four different leagues and then playoffs all against each other. So, you know, fair play to them. And, and there's, I know the AC Milan fans are getting a bit carried away now. They, they think they're going to make it into the Champions League. I don't think their squad is good enough. But I don't know, this, uh, what's his name? This Patrick, uh, what's, uh, what's his surname? C- 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 Coutrone. He looks like a very good player. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they they can realistically... Uh, well, uh, the gap to the fourth place is like, I think, seven points. Mm. And with the current form, it's still, it's, I think, around 12 matches to go, uh, quite, quite a lot. So that's not too much, uh, if, if, if they keep up the good form, but then. It's doable, but it's know. a lot of football, you know. I, also, they play in the Europa League. I don't know how will they approach that because they're in, now in round of 16. Maybe that's, that might be the way to the Champions League. Obviously, there you got good teams like Atletico or Arsenal. I mean, they got. It's, I don't know if you saw the Europa League draw, but they play Arsenal in the round of sixteen. But they, they, must, they, they can't be scared of that after 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 Arsenal's you know showing. Well, I wouldn't. So I wouldn't say so, man. No. Uh, I think it's it's a it's a tough draw for AC Milan mm. uh, because that. Arsen Wenger knows that that's the only way to Champions League by winning the Europa League. Yeah, 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 that's true. So I think they will turn their attention to to those matches. I think so. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, he he might pro- approach it differently, mm. but I think so because that's the only way they can. Uh, it's gonna be. It, they can't make it through the league, so I would at his place. I would turn their attention to the Europa League. Mm. Should. Uh, Dan, back to Premier League. Uh, Liverpool, are they peaking at the right time or are they peaking just a little too soon for a Champions League run? Um, I think they're peaking at the right time. I would like to um, refresh the listeners' memory of what I said the Liverpool score would be this weekend. 4-1. Did I say I, I said 3-0 or 4-1, didn't you did, I? You did, Dan, you did. Uh, yeah. well, um, 
I'm not asking that right, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I mean, it was only West Ham. I hope Martin heard that. <laughs> but, but yeah, you, you go look at you go look at the teams around them. Like Spurs took eight to nine minutes to put one Palace uh, past Palace. Man United, um, yeah, they squeaked past Chelsea, who of course are in fifth. I think Liverpool are peaking at the right time. Ten games left. Get on a good run now. I mean, they're obviously not going to win the title, but top four is easy in their grasp. Top mm. three, yeah, I think they should do it. Mm. Um, I think Chelsea are the ones who are going to worry because you know, down in fifth, I, um, they're they're the ones who are going to make up make up ground. Arsenal are out of it now. I can't I can't see Arsenal catch up ten points on Spurs. So, yeah, I think I think Liverpool are you know have, have peaked at the right time, um, and they've just got to get over the finish line now. It's all about. Finishing higher, so you get the uh, the group stage start, not the qualifying stage yeah, start. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I suppose if if the draw goes well for them, because I mean they're they're true against Porto pretty much. If they got if they got Donetsk, I think they'd be happy. Shakhtar Donetsk, I think they'd be happy enough with that. Uh, who else? Could they very, have? very, very tough place to go and uh, to go and play away. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. But, uh, yeah no, they. I don't know. I, th- I think they'd be okay against them, but like against say, say Bayern. Or, or maybe Barca would, would be a lot tougher. But then again, we saw Chelsea against Barca. Look on on on, on the Man United uh, Chelsea match, lads. I was watch, watching that as well, and uh, it started well. The first ten minutes were good. Then you know, ten, then Man United t- sort of took over, got a bit boring. Uh, but then at the end of this first half was was decent, and the second half was good. But uh, now I haven't seen the reports. Was Hazard injured? Is that's why he took him off? Because the game completely changed uh, when Conte took Hazard off. To be honest with you, didn't watch it. <laughs> I watched about five minutes and um, I felt I felt the cure for my insomnia and was like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sleep right now. <laughs> Ooh, damning. <laughs> yeah, I, I I had my fix for fo- football this weekend. I watched my own team lose again. Yeah, that'll that'll do it for you, yeah. Which I, I'll come to because um, the other team we played, I'm I'm going to talk about in one of uh, one of our tips today, mm-hmm. so. Um, no, I didn't watch Man U versus Chelsea. Um, I, to be honest, I wasn't that interested. Mm. I, I, I can't get I can't get hype for these games anymore. It's just you know, it's overkill, I guess. Yeah, no, I I, I, I wanted to watch it, but I wasn't expecting anything, you know. And uh, I had presumed we would have been seeing a one all, a nil nil, even. So uh, I hope people uh, who went against the bookies and booked overs. Uh, I hope they, 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 they hope, hope there's plenty of people out there who made uh, a few bob off it, you know, because the bookies got it wrong, most punters got it wrong, so that's always good when the bookies get it wrong and people make money. And uh, but mm. yeah, I definitely think from watching it, the game the game definitely changed when Hazard went off. I thought Chelsea were in control. I thought Chelsea were going to win it, and then or if anyone was going to win it, it would have been Chelsea. But then uh, yeah, he took Hazard off, and uh, it all went to hell. They were awful, and then desperation at the end, then uh, trying to get um. Uh, Giroud in to score as well, and it was just too little, too late, you know. But anyway, I hope he learned from it because Conte's made some mistakes like that in the past, but he does tend to learn from his mistakes. And I know that losing to Mourinho, that 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 would have hurt him badly. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Let's get on to our uh, football this week. Dan, then, we'll start with you since you brought up the championship. Um, I'll, I'll tell the listeners as well. So from now on, what we're going to do is the Pro Tipsters are going to uh, pick their games and then we're going to talk about those and uh, make a conversation out of them. So, Dan, we'll start with you. Yeah, um, so there are two games in the championship on Tuesday. One of them is a relegation six-pointer between Hull City and Barnsley. Um, both teams won at the weekend. Hull um, beat Sheffield United rather surprisingly, 1-0 on Friday night, whereas Barnsley um, did over my team, Birmingham City, and dumped us in the bottom three. They beat us 2-0. So I had the pleasure of watching Barnsley for 90 minutes, and they're a young side. Um, they're not They're not brilliant. Um, don't, don't get me wrong. They beat us because we're appallingly bad. Um, but they weren't bad. They, 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 they made some good chances. And the second half, especially, like, we, we had, like, all our attacking players. We were trying our best to it, and we couldn't break them down. And when they got the ball, it was like they had 12 players who were just passing around us. 
So they're a decent side. Um, so looking at Hull, Nigel Atkins took over from Leonid Slutsky, um back in, I think it was, uh, was it, uh, December? Yeah, it's not that long ago. Yeah, December, November, December, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Well, he's only, he's only won three times since then, which is pretty bad in 14 games. Um, but two of those wins have come the last three games. Mm. And Hull is starting to, you know, it's all about peaking at the right time, isn't it? And Hull's home record is actually pretty good. They're at, without defeat in six at the KCOM. Um, four of them were draws, but they've kept four clean sheets. Yeah, they're scoring plenty um, as well, aren't they? They're scoring. No, 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 no. At home, at home, they've only scored three goals in, in six games. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Away from home, they score, but at home, they don't. But where it is with Hull, they've got a midfield trio of uh, Seb Larson, ex Birmingham City, uh, Sunderland, New Dicko, who's at Wolverhampton Wanderers, and Evandro. And against Sheffield United, that midfield trio was really good. And if they're back on their game again against Barnsley, Barnsley aren't going to be able to pass it round them, you know? Um, so, B- Barnsley came into the game, their away record wasn't great. Um, it was their first clean sheet in six games. Um, the Barnsley don't have a problem scoring. Um, they've only failed not, uh, they've only failed to find the net three times in the last ten championship games and only once in the last five away from home. So Barnsley score goals, they just can't, can't stop conceding them. So I looked at this one and Hull are actually 1.90 for the, uh, uh well 1.94 this morning, um, against them winning at home. And, Okay, so Hull draw a lot, but against the Barnes, you've got to look at motivation. The motivation is there to win, because if Hull win, they go five points clear of the drop zone. They're against the Barnes side that can't defend very well, that while they did win at the weekend, it is still a bit shaky, still getting used to their new manager. I fancy it. I really fancy Hull to win this. Um, you, you could also look at the goals market. Over two and a half goals is available at 1.93. So, um, in the last 10 Hull City home championship games, I would have landed six times. Although in the last five, I would have only landed once. Um, he's tightened stuff up, hasn't he, Atkins? Yeah, well, that's what he's done. Yeah. That, that's what, that's what's improved him. You know, you look at those, uh, those home results, there's a few nil nils in there. Yeah. And, um, if you don't concede, you don't lose. It's as simple as that. The, the big problem Birmingham City, my team have had, is we cannot stop conceding. We cannot stop conceding silly goals. Plus the fact we're the lowest scorers in the league with only 22 goals in 30 something games, which is just, I, I, some, some, one of my friends worked out that he paid 14 quid a goal this season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, 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 not good value there. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, um, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how bad Birmingham City were. Um, there was actually, um, there was, there was a bit of toxicity at the game. And, um, the, the dugout is by, um, where one of my mates sits. And someone ran up to the dugout and lobbed his season ticket at Steve Cottrell. Uh. Now I've heard that the board, uh, the club are taking further action. They're going to punish the player, punish the fan. They're giving him it back. Hey. <laughs> really they good. really did check his season ticket and they really did <laughs> it back. Um, <laughs> how, but you can tell it's bad when, when the manager has to have a police escort to the tunnel at half time. Yeah, he can't, he can't be staying there. Much, uh, no, much well, the rumours are he's going, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll um, see. we'll see. There's also rumours that we're going to get Gary Monk or, um, Gordon Strachan as manager. Please, no. Wow. Um, yeah. but yeah, going back to Hull City versus Barnsley, my tip, the home win. 1.90, 1.94, somewhere around there. The, the odds are coming down, which says to me that people, other people are piling on as well. Mm-hmm. So that's my tip for that game. All right, good stuff. Let's go over to you then, Johnny. You have something from uh, La Liga. Yeah, so unlike Dan, I'm a big fan of European football. So yeah, he could, <laughs> <laughs> so, including La Liga. Um, there is this interesting match between Espanyol, uh, Barcelona against Real Madrid uh, on Tuesday. In the evening, it's a match of third Real Madrid against 15th uh, Espanyol. Two teams that are um, in a bit of different uh, form. Uh, Real, Real really picked up the momentum uh, lately and they're uh, really, really improved. They score goals. 
Uh, they win matches. Uh, they won last four league matches, and what's more important, all of them by more than one goal. Uh, during the weekend, they beat Alaves 4-0. Um, Espanol, from the last five matches, they've got four draws, um, which might sound uh, as a, not as good, but uh, the draws were against Barcelona, Celta Vigo, Villarreal, and uh, Deportivo La Coruña, so pretty pretty good record, even though uh, they are in position where they would need to pick up few points to be, you know, in the in the calm waters of the mid, uh, middle of the table to not feel the pressure of relegations. Um, the team you suggested, Marcelo, Tony Cross, and Modric are out, but uh, Ramos is back for Real Madrid, which is good for them. Some stats. There have been over 2.5 goals scored in 21 of Real Madrid's last 24 away games. So a lot of goals when Real Madrid are playing away from home. Um, they have won last 11 matches against Espanyol in all competitions. That's quite incredible. And I've looked the last time that uh, Espanyol managed to win against Real Madrid was... Uh, I think yeah, it was in 2007 in the league. So that's uh, 11 years back, nice. quite a long time. And to speak about the odds, the, the line currently is uh, 1.25, and the odds are falling down. Obviously, they're, the people are uh, picking Real Madrid to win this, given their current form. I think personally. Uh, they need to win this game to keep up the momentum. Uh, also going ahead, they, they have a league game uh, during the weekend in the league, but then more importantly, next week, there is the uh, Champions League against uh, Paris Saint-Germain in Paris, which will be extremely difficult. Even though they won the first match uh, 3-1, it's going to be really, really difficult uh, game for them. So I think it's for their confidence and uh, it's 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 important to to keep up the good form. Uh, so although I usually go against the market and against everyone, this time I think uh, I think Real Madrid are going to do this and going to win uh, by at least two goals. So there are a couple of options you can pick: uh, minus one Asian handicap. For lower odds, or if you if you are brave enough, minus 1.25 or even minus 1.5, depending on how much you're willing to to how much you're willing to risk. 1.5 is nice odds, isn't it? 2.32 I can see at the moment. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, yeah, I like the sound of that. Yeah. Or alternatively, uh, try winning both at both half time and full time. Uh, Real Madrid were. Uh, they were winning at both in half time and full time in their last five matches against Espanol. Mm. So it's only a stat, but uh, I think they will go for the win from the beginning, and they will want to have the the game uh, decided as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, we'll stick with you, Johnny, on the next one as well because it's on the same day. You've gone for uh, Swansea and Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, I picked this game. It's it's an FA Cup uh, replay. Uh, Swansea against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, this is the kind of game that uh, I think the kind of replay that none of these sides wanted to to, to play. Uh, Swansea's uh, ten match and beat and run uh, came to an end this weekend. They were they they were beaten for one by Brighton in the Premier League. Um, they've got an uh, important yeah. I think all all their league games are important now. Uh, fixture against West Ham uh, upcoming weekend. So, however, uh, Sheffield Wednesday they've got a few, well, quite a lot of players injured going into this game. The first match was not very entertaining from what I saw. It was a pretty boring game. Um, some interesting stats. Sheffield Wednesday uh, drew 6 out of 10 uh, away games, last 10 away games in all competitions. Um, well, I think Swansea are really, really good at home. They won last five home games and they're, 
especially especially at home they are for me they are a different team than when they play away although i think i expect few changes on both sides uh, obviously um carlos carvajal uh, has few more options to to rotate than um than his counterpart uh i, I was looking at either under 2.5 or under 2.25 goals because I expect close game. I expect Swansea to win by one or two goals. So either Swansea to win or under 2.5 or 2.25 goals. Depends. Uh, the, the thing is with the under, uh, with the under prediction that you don't really want to pick under if you want to watch the game because then. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. I always hate betting under because it's like it's it's anti football, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but then I I, I always do it. Uh, I mean, I, I not always, but I, I often do it. But I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 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 some psychology plays part because you know if you, if you predict under in the beginning of the game, it's winning or the bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder. If likewise, both, I wonder. If likewise, if you, if you pick, for example, over, you know that oh, you still need three goals. Okay, twentieth minute, you're already nervous because it's nil nil. Fortieth <laughs> minute, you're already still nervous because it's still nil nil. Okay, then the, the first goal comes in sixtieth minute. Say, okay, well, only thirty minutes going on. I'm going to change the channel and change it back thirty minutes later. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's true. It's nil nil at half time, and you're like, oh god. <laughs> maybe maybe I should go with over one and a half. No, no, I won't. No, no, no. There's still plenty of time. No, I don't know what to do. No, and, and I, exactly. I wonder, like, with with the under bet, I I bet Jose Mourinho bets unders all the time, and Rafa <laughs> Benitez. I I bet they do. Maybe, maybe that's why that bet was invented, just for defensive managers uh, like those. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that, Johnny. We'll go back to Dan then. Dan has. Uh, Dan has a rematch. Well, not a rematch, but uh, I suppose well, it is a rematch of uh, Arsenal taking on Man City on Thursday in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, so Arsenal, fresh from their defeat to Man City at Wembley, gets taken one at the Emirates in the Premier League, and Wenger gets to um, atone for his error. I guess. He, it, I, I think it's a good opportunity for Arsenal because um, they didn't play well, and they can maybe rejig things and see if they can go again and beat them this time. And of course, their, their record at the Emirates is really, really good. Um, they've only lost once there this season, uh, Man United 3-1. They've only lost twice in about 26 games, I think it is. Three times in about 36 games. So, you know, they, they don't lose often at home. And against the Man City side, who, and I was quite standing when I, because I was, I've been looking it up and, Man City haven't won the Premier League away game in three games. I'm like, wow! Because um, they drew at Palace, mm-hmm. lost to Liverpool, drew at Burnley. It's like, wow, they are fallible. Maybe this is Arsenal's chance. But I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I, I looked at the, I looked at the odds and the odds are just crap, you know? Um, I'd want, I'd want Arsenal 4.25 to win and I don't think they're going to do that. But I looked at uh, the Asian handicap and you can get 2.12 against Arsenal not to lose. Do I trust Arsenal not to lose against Manchester City? <laughs> of course you don't, Dan. No. no. I think that's the path to ruin. It really is. And, you know, Man City to win um, with the 0.5 handicap or 1.73, there's no value there. No. I'm sorry. Um, so I looked at goals, though, because goals is interesting. And... The, uh, obviously the 2.5 market, over 2.5 is like less than 1.5, it's not worth it, but over 3.5 is available at 2.08. And I thought, hmm, this is interesting because although Arsenal have won a lot at home, they do concede a lot of goals at home, they don't keep clean sheets. And if you look at their other matches against the top five teams, um, take out Spurs, they beat Spurs 2-0, they drew 2-2 with Chelsea, so that's over 3.5. They drew three one, uh, sorry, drew three three with Liverpool. That's over three and a half, and they lost three one to Man United, also over three and a half. So that's got me intrigued. And then I looked through Man City, and of course, you know, their their away record's not great at the moment, but they did beat Swansea four three, uh, sorry four nil. They did, uh, yes, they lost to Liverpool, but they did score three times in a four three game. 
And, you know, you look at their away record, they score two or three goals every game. And, you know, the ones that stand out are the ones where they haven't. So Newcastle United, for instance, Palace and Burnley recently, they haven't. But before that, it was only Chelsea that they've not scored more than a goal. And so I'm thinking, hmm, over three and a half goals at 2.0 away. And that's what I'm going to go for. Um, you see, I've just been listening to what you and what you and Johnny have been saying about the unders bet. I hate the unders bet. You wouldn't know why. <laughs> go on. So you watch the game and the go- a goal goes in, and you're like, oh well, that's my bet screwed, isn't it? Um, and that's it. You know, like bet's done. Um, I like overs because I like the feeling that um, you can have your bet one within 20 minutes. Like 20 minutes, all the goals are scored, and you're like, oh, that was nice. You know, I can watch this football knowing that I've won. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I've probably been paid out. It's perfect. Stick the money on something else. <laughs> I was Man City this season, I'm not kidding. There was, um, I'm trying to remember which game it was. I think it was, um, I think it was the 6-0 Watford game. Yeah, it was the 6-0 Watford game. I, I'd gone, uh, for Man, C- Man City to score more than three. And they did. And then, I was like, well, okay, Man City score again. Go on then. Man City score again. Go on then. <laughs> I got greedy and went for seven, but you can't win them all. No, you can't. But yeah, I, I like overs. I like over bets. I, I, they're more appealing to me. And yeah, okay, it's over three and a half, but I can see that it will happen. Um, I think Man City will win. Um, I think, you know, three one. Yeah, that's, that's possible. I think Man City will concede as well. Um, their defence isn't perfect and you've got to look at the games that Man City have got and, and Arsenal have got coming up. So, um, Arsenal, for example, after they play Man City, they've got to play Chelsea, uh, sorry, no, it's Man City. After Man City, Arsenal, Arsenal have got to play, play, the, they've got to play Brighton at home, Albion away, Milan away, Watford, Milan at home, all in the period of a couple of weeks. Mm. Man, Man City have got um, Arsenal away, Chelsea at home, Basel at home, Stoke away, and yeah, you know it's, it's, that's all going to ratchet up as well, isn't it? So there's going to be some squad. I think there'll be some squad rotation too. Bearing in mind that Arsenal played a couple of players I didn't think they'd play at the weekend. Um, they've got uh, Mkhitaryan can come back as well. Uh, Man, Man City could like rotate the front three. I think there's there's options as well there, and I think that rotation is actually costing like Man City's defence, for example. Um, the, I think they're struggling at left back. Um, I don't think Danilo has been quite up to it. Delph's um, Delph was suspended. I think he might come back. Oh, he's suspended well, got, for this one as well. Is he suspended for this yeah. one as well? Yeah. So then it's Zinchenko. Yeah. You see, and I I think that they'll they'll rotate to a weaker side for this one, knowing that they've got Chelsea at the weekend, which they'll need a strong side for. Then Basel, they're already what four 0 up. Who cares? Yeah. But you know, just 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 play a weaker side against that one. So I think this one is like a weaker sort of side that we'll see. So there'll be more goals there yeah, as well. So we'll see. We'll see Gundogan come in. We'll see uh, Bernardo Silva come in. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you can you pronounce his name again for me? Which one, Gundogan? Yeah, yeah. Please don't say that word, Gundogan. Why? Is it wrong? <laughs> Yeah, it's Gundogan. Gundogan, okay. Yeah, you Sorry. don't pronounce the second G, it's got a thingy over it. Aha, uh-huh, the thingy over it. <laughs> right. Gundogan. Cool, alright Dan, so look, thanks for that. Uh, you're gonna leave us now because uh, myself and Johnny are gonna do a little bit of tennis, so please, uh, pro tips to Dan, tell us where we can find you on the interwebs. You can find me on Twitter, at pro tips to Dan, all one word. I'm also kind of running the pro tips to ENG accounts, um, although it's been a, I don't know how Martin does it, so um, I'm covering for him. He's, he's, Martin's on holiday, uh, taking in North America this week, sending us beautiful photos of ice hockey rinks and, and breweries. Um, so, yeah, Pro Tips to ENG or Pro Tips to Dan on Twitter. On Facebook, Pro Tips to Dan, or just come to the Pro Tips to UK page. It's a little bit sparse than it is normally. Or come to the Pro Tips to .com website, come to the betting news, and that's what you'll see what I've been doing is writing tons of previews. Um, there's seven new ones up today for this week's football. So, and I've been writing all about La Liga, so I've been really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite competition. <laughs> As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast. 
or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Okay, we're back then. So it's myself and Pro Tips to Johnny, and we're going to talk about a couple of uh, tennis matches, tennis games. Uh, what's going on in the world of tennis this week, Johnny? Well, there are a couple of uh, tournaments uh, going on. Uh, this is uh, after a while. There are two 500 uh, uh, tournaments uh, category. Uh, I've picked uh, matches from one, so we will focus on one, and that's a uh, favorite tournament in, in uh, Acapulco in uh, Mexico. A lot of listeners will uh, know about Acapulco as a beach beach place, you know, uh, very nice uh, holiday destination, but it's also a tennis destination for some good tennis. Lots of kidnappings um, as well. <laughs> I was what? told to avoid it. I was over there and I said, I want to go to Acapulco. And they went, no, nope, you're too white. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and anyway, uh, moving along. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to risk, did you? <laughs> the reason why I picked this tournament, because I've read that it was, uh, it was one of the ter- three, three tournaments rated as the best tournament of last year by, by players. So it's a very it's it's a favorite tournament for players. They like it. They like how it's organized. They ha- like the fans. They like the facilities. They like they everything. Like tequila, Johnny. That's what they like. They like tequila. Well, I was trying to go the you know the proper <laughs> athlete's way of uh, explaining why they like it. You went for the sorry the lowest common denominator. That's me all over, man. That's me all over. I I, I appeal to the to the lowest. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 this tournament is played on hard courts although um, when I first have heard of Acapulco f- uh, tournament a few years ago I thought it's a, it, it must be or in Mexico somehow I got the associ- association it must be on uh, clay court but no it's a, it's a hard court tournament it's, the tournament is called Abierto Mexicano Tail Cell however you pronounce it um, some query is the defending champion um, there are some really good players uh, from top from top ten uh, involved. There's now number uh, world number two Rafael Nadal. Uh, there is Alexander Zverev, Dominic Thiem, Jack Sock, Kevin Anderson, the new number ten, and Juan Martin Del Potro. So quite a good lineup of uh, some interesting players in this tournament. Um, last year, uh, Sam Querrey beat Rafael Nadal in the final. So, uh, Rafael, but we have to say, uh, we speak, spoken uh, a few weeks ago about uh, Roger Ferrell claiming his uh, world number one spot uh, in Rotterdam from Rafael uh, Nadal. Rafa, uh, the truth is now, even Ra- if Rafael Nadal wins the tournament in Acapulco, he cannot uh, become the world number one. Um, he cannot take it away from Federer for now. Um uh, for Nadal, it's uh, it's a first tournament since his uh, retirement uh, and at the Australian Open when he retired uh, against uh, Cilic, being uh, two two nil uh, down in the fifth set in the quarterfinals. Uh, but he has a very impressive record in Acapulco. He's 14 wins and one uh, loss only in Acapulco, and that was the last year's final defeat to San Query. So he likes the tournament, although it's a hardcore tournament, and he belongs to one of the favorites of the tournament. It's, it, we have to say about the surface, it's quicker. Uh, let's say if we compare it to Australian Open, it's quicker, so it should suit more the big hitters and uh, the, the players who can serve well. And that's going to be the first match that uh, we're going to talk about. Two players that can serve very well. All right, so go for it then. Who is it? Uh, the first match I've picked is uh, John Isner against uh, Ryan Harrison. It's The game is played uh, at 1 o'clock Central Europe time uh, uh, in the morning tomorrow. Uh, so it's All-American Affair. Uh, John Isner, number 19 in the ATP ranking. Ryan Harrison is uh, uh, number 60 in the ATP ranking. Uh, obviously, I, I think both uh, tennis fans know both of these players. John Isner is uh, 
32 year old uh, Ryan Harrison has been younger he's 25 I think um John Isner has the better head to head record he won six matches against Harrison only lost two um but this season uh, Isner is in quite bad form he is two wins four uh, defeats so far and all those four losses were against players who are ranked outside the top uh, top 60 in the world. And why I mentioned top 60? Because like I mentioned, uh, Harrison is uh, number 60 in the world. So all those four losses were players that were outside of top 60. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, Ryan Harrison, uh, who was the runner-up, uh, who lost to Nick Kyrgyz in Brisbane in the, earlier this year. He reached uh, the first round, uh, sorry, the third round of the Australian Open while uh, Isner was knocked out in the first. And he didn't do bad at all. Uh, he lost in Australian Open against uh, the finalist, Marian Cilic. And he has a good record this season. Uh, so far in 2018, he's 7-4. Um, however, uh, Ryan Harrison and, uh, is uh, has usually problems uh, against players who are serving well. Uh, if we look at his uh, defeats this season... Uh, he lost against Kyrgyz, good server, against Cilic, great server, against Karlovic, probably that's the only thing Karlovic can do really well is serve, and against Opelka, so big hitters, big servers, so he doesn't, so he might have problems against Isner, and if we look at the head to head, it suggests that, uh, it suggests that he, ha- he usually has problems against Isner, that's what I was saying last week, that head to head can be sometimes useful in tennis. Especially when you compare this, the different styles that uh, players uh, use. Uh, John Isner is uh, 280, 280 centimeters, so he's very tall. He can uh, cover the ground angles well, well when serving. Uh, but a lot of his games are, a lot of his uh, sets are decided in tie breaks. Because obviously he's good on serve, but not as good in returning. So, um for this one I would see either two tie breaks or three sets. Um uh, it's very hard to separate the winner, although I think John Isner has the chance to win this one against Harrison. But uh, I would be looking for uh for lots of uh games, so for Either over 25.5 games, which would be covered with two tie breaks, or even lower, higher line, but then you would need the three sets. Cool, good. And and the next one you've picked is uh, Andre Rublev and David Ferrer. So tell us about that. Yeah, the second match I picked is Andre Rublev, uh, the 20-year-old Russian, against uh, David Ferrer, the 35-year-old Spaniard. Uh, obviously, in this matchup, it's two two generations, let's say, meeting. David Ferrer is uh, yeah, he he's a great player or he was a great player he is a great player but I think um, at the at the moment uh, his form he's not in good form and you can feel the age from his uh, you know from his performances that uh, his probably his best times are over they are meeting for the second time in their career they met for the first time this year. Um, in uh, Australian Open, Rublev uh, won the match 3-2, so it was a five-setter. It was a, it was a quite entertaining long match, but uh, I think the sur- the surface, as the quicker uh, surface in uh, Acapulco, will suit him, will suit Rublev more because it's quicker than in uh, in Melbourne at the Australian Open. Um, the 20-year-old Russian uh, Rublev. He's 11 four, uh, 11 wins, four defeats in 2018. But he, his uh, losses were to, to Kyle Monfils in Doha final against uh, Grigor Dimitrov in Australian Open and Rotterdam and Joe Wilfried Song in Montpellier. So he lost against uh, really good players. He has a good form. Uh, he played uh, already quite a number of matches. Wells Ferrer... Uh, has played two tournaments in February. He lost twice uh, in the first round on both occasions. 
uh, to Karen Cacino in Montpellier and Alexander Zwer in Rotterdam. And um, obviously, current form favors definitely Robro. Um, he should have it easier with, uh, as I said, with the quicker conditions. Um, I think Ferrer just has no longer the speed and the athleticism, athleticism that he really relied on because we, if, if you watch Ferrer over the past few years, he was a really great fighter. He was really a player, dedicated player. I, I love to watch him because you could feel that uh, he really does his best. Although I think he, I've read that he's a heavy smoker actually, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> well. but he, he was really good with his, uh, physical shape, he was running a lot and really, really going for it. But obviously with the, with the age, it's uh, getting more and more difficult for him. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting match, but I expect Rublo to win this in uh, two sets. Two sets. So would you, would you take it on the handicap or, or would you go with a, with a correct score? Uh, either. I mean, uh, there are possibilities of going for game handicap or going for set handicap. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing with the, the game handicap, it, it it might not be covered uh, if I don't know. For example, if you see a tie break or 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 so on. But the game handicap is actually two point five. Uh, the, the odds are dropping. I can see uh, Rublev covering the two point five uh, game handicap. To be to be to be to be honest. And uh, as for this, but of course, if you will predict uh, two nil. Set a win for uh, Rublo, then you're gonna get higher odds uh, above uh, 2.2, even about 2.3 somewhere, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. So it's up to you. I mean, up to the listeners. Uh, but I, I definitely think that Rublo has a higher chances of winning than uh, David Fer. Good stuff. Right then, your pro tips, Johnny. Thanks very much for your football and tennis knowledge. We'll wrap off then. So can you tell us where we can find you on the internet? Very easily uh, as ProTips to Johnny on Twitter and ProTips to Johnny on Facebook. Okay then, so back on my own with some uh, NBA action. Now, uh, I'm not going to give you any games for tonight, uh, Monday night. I'm looking at a match from uh, Tuesday. Uh, and if I'm looking at for a match from uh, Tuesday night and the Miami Heat are taking on the Philadelphia 76ers. Um so there's not there's not many odds out on this yet because it's 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 uh, it's quite early to be speaking about it. But uh, Miami Heat are 1.7 uh, to win, and the 76ers are around evens. Uh, usually, I I'm the type that will go for an Asian handicap or an over under bet, but I'm actually just going to go for a straight bet on this. The Heat they're uh, they're very very good at home. They have won uh, the last three out of five at home uh, narrowly. Uh, lost to Orlando Magic in a game they really should have won. I was watching it; they really should have won that match. They made they made a made a pig's ear of it, as we'd say at home. And uh, yeah, they've won seven out of ten. And the 76ers, they they're they're pretty bad away from Philadelphia. They've only won one out of the last five. They've only won four out of the last ten. Just having a quick look here, and as well, uh, Miami. Uh, Miami Heat have beaten them the last uh, two times that they've played in Miami in the American Airlines Arena, which is a terrible name for an arena. That's a, that's a real sellout name. That, but uh, yeah. So the tip for that: uh, Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. Miami Heat to win. Next up, then we have some ice hockey, some NHL uh, tips from me as well. So um, the Boston Bruins are taking on the Carolina Hurricanes, and the Bruins they've made a couple of signings. Uh, over the last uh, 24, 48 hours, by the time you listen to this, they have signed the Team USA captain from uh, from the Olympics. Um, so he wasn't in the NHL, obviously, for him to play. Um, Brian Gionta, um, he's getting $700,000 $700, uh, for a one-year contract with them. So, yeah, not bad at all. And as well, they signed uh, Rick Nash. From the New York Rangers as well. Nash, Nash, a great player, very aggressive, uh, scores a lot, uh, chips in a lot. He's, he's a class act, so he is. And uh, yeah, he came on last night against the um, the Sabers, the Buffalo Sabers, and they were really out of sorts. Uh, I think it it's going to take them a couple of day- games to uh, fit these new players in. But uh, home advantage 
on a Tuesday night. They're playing the Carolina Hurricanes, and I think they should uh, get the better of them there. The odds aren't great. They're around 1.9 at the moment. I think it's only going to fall further, so maybe get on it earlier. Have a look at the stats as well yourselves. Overall, the Bruins, they've had a bit of a bad run, so they've lost to the, the Sabres. They lost to the Toronto uh, Maple Leafs as well in a close match 4-3 of the last uh, this of the last um, home and away games but at home they've won the last 3 out of 5 and and the last 7 out of 10 while the Carolina Hurricanes they're, they're not very good away from home they've only won 2 out of the last 3 and only and only 4 of the last 10 and the overs line looks good as well you can get over 5.5 goals for uh, just under even so it's around 1.9 1.9 1.95 I can see there so it might uh, you might, might get something better coming up although with the Boston Bruins involved you would expect it actually to go down because they they are quite a a high scoring and aggressive team so if you don't like the looks of Boston Bruins to win and you'd like better odds maybe betting on over five and a half uh, goals uh, would be more uh, like it. A second tip uh, from NHL uh, the Vegas Golden Knights who I was uh, waxing lyrical about on the last podcast they're just a fantastic team they're so great to watch and you know even though they do have quite a lot of injuries at the minute they've been able to cope uh, without uh, a lot of the players and there's just a great team spirit there they've scored they've scored 23 goals in the last five they've won four of the last five and uh, six of the last 10 at home um, the LA Kings, they're not a bad team at all. They've won three of the last five away, but, uh, just the Vegas goal and nice. They're, they're on such a great run that, uh, I expect them to, to win this again. They've beaten the Kings three times already this season. So twice at home, one was in overtime. Uh, one was, uh, just in normal time and they beat them away in Los Angeles as well, uh, two, uh, three. Yeah. So, uh, I think they'll do the business here again. Uh, one point. 8-8 eight, eight at the minute, around 1.9. Um, not not great odds, especially for ice hockey, and that doesn't include overtime. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they should do it. Uh, maybe maybe you're more into uh, overs and unders, like we were talking about earlier with the football. But, uh, yeah, you can have a look at those, those uh, stats yourselves and make up your mind. But I think, uh, I think the, the Vegas Golden Knights and the Boston Bruins both to win at home would be my bets. Maybe put them in the accumulator. Right, folks, well, that's it then from us. We've covered football, we covered tennis, ice hockey, and basketball in this episode of the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. We hope you like the new format where we're bringing you more sports and more expertise from the Pro Tipsters. If you'd like to get in touch, you can get me Pro Tipster Pod on Twitter, Pro Tipster Paddy on Facebook, and we're all usually hanging around the Pro Tipster uh, UK Facebook page as well. So, facebook.com forward slash Pro Tipster. UK. Right, that's it for me then, and we'll be back on Thursday with another episode of the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. Enjoy whatever sports you're watching then this week, and sure, I hope you make a few bob as well. Good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global, or get in touch on Twitter. Pro Tipster E-N or Pro Tipster I-R-L. Bye.